Hi everyone! When you paint animals you inevitably work from photographs a lot of the time and the quality of your photographs makes all the difference. I love being able to meet and photograph a subject for their portrait but it's not always logistically possible. I end up relying on clients sending me good photographs a lot of the time. In this video I'm going to show you my top tips for getting the best photo reference to work from and I'm going to use these lunatics to demonstrate. But even if you can't get meeting the dog or animal that you're photographing, some of these ideas will help your client get the best photo reference for you to work from. Photograph somewhere with good natural light, like in all of these examples. Outside or in a well-lit room, but preferably natural light. Have the light source hitting your subject head on or from one side. Don't put the subject in front of the light source or they'll be completely backlit. Never use a flash. It gives a false representation of colours, flattens everything and creates lens flare in eyes as well as lots of other problems. So avoid the flash and search for natural light. Shoot from the subject's eye level. How often I've been sent photos of dogs from odd and unflattering angles. A viewpoint I'm not that keen on is looking down from above. There are exceptions to every rule however and some of my favourite quirky portraits have been from this viewpoint. But on the whole, for most animals, eye level works best. So you've got to get on their level or bring them up to your level. So try putting them on a chair if they're a small dog. Experiment with the angle of the dog's face whether it's a side profile, three-quarter view, or straight on. Some breeds suit certain views better than others. Quite often, a three-quarter view works really well for showing the muzzle rather than flattening the face. Have a second person there to assist you. You need to be ready to snap with the camera, and ideally, it's helpful to have someone there to pose and distract the dogs for you. You might only get the one chance for that great shot, so you need to be ready. Get their attention with noises. Try asking the dog's owner if there are any noises that perk the dog's interest. I spend a lot of my time squeaking, meowing and generally chatting to dogs while photographing them. And it's the same with people, only without the squeaks and the meows, but I find it takes a little time for anyone, human or animal, to behave comfortably in front of a lens. So be patient and try to find what will make your sitter show their best side to you. It's not always possible to get a group of animals to pose together. So here are a couple of things to do if you want to photograph individually and piece together later on. To realistically patch together photographs, the viewpoint and the lighting must be the same for all animals, otherwise it will look very odd in your painting. So my advice is to stage an area and keep the camera in the same place. Just place the animals in the spot you want to photograph each time. Think about how they might work together in a composition, so try and stagger their pose a bit, some of them lying down, some of them sitting. Give yourself a range of poses for each animal to work with later on on Photoshop. Lastly, have patience. Whether you're photographing a domestic animal for a portrait or a wild animal, patience is usually vital. But having the right photo reference will save you so much time later on. And this is something that also applies when you're choosing good reference images to practice on. Try to follow these same guidelines when judging what will make a good photograph to work from. The last thing you want to do is give yourself a difficult challenge when you're still learning. Nowadays though, a quality image can come from your smartphone if you follow some simple tips. You don't need a high quality camera to capture domestic or farm animals at least. Longer lenses are usually recommended for wildlife though. My last bit of advice is really to try and get behind any camera and get snapping. Whether it's your dogs, or wildlife at a local zoo, or the butterflies in your back garden, having that initial connection with the image you paint does make a big difference. 
Most importantly, you've composed the image. So the very first decisions about the painting's composition were made by you, the artist. And that's an important thing to practice as this skill will also free you up creatively and it'll even give you better judgment in editing your client's photographs. I seldom paint a photo that I haven't cropped or improved in some way beforehand. Another benefit to taking your own photos is the fact that you were there and you can draw from your memory of the lighting and the colours and the mood. I love painting from photos I've taken as I can often make a lot of enhancements to the painting from my memory of how vivid those colours were in real life. But I understand that this isn't for everyone. Not everyone has the opportunity to go and photograph those things that they feel inspired to paint. But that's where the internet comes in and there are so many royalty free sites with free images for artists to work from. I would just say if you ever use a photographer's work to please ask their permission before you do. So I hope this video has convinced you of the importance of high quality images to work from and also given you some ideas of what makes the perfect photograph.